Hey, what's up? This is Václav. So I have recently published this uh, five parts masterclass about automations in Home Assistant. I, I hope you like that. I, I was uh, enjoying uh, making those videos for you. Uh, now, throughout the videos, I received a couple of questions, but I couldn't answer them because they wouldn't fit in and, and the videos were pre-recorded anyhow. Uh, so, so I couldn't really, you know, get back to those. Mm. So instead I decided to shoot this short video to answer those really two questions. One was, I spoke about automations, but how about scripts? Because for the automations I was referring to scripts, but I didn't really tell about what the scripts are, what is the difference and what they're used for. So this is one of the things I'd like to show you and I'd like to actually show you uh, one, I guess, useful script that I'm using so you could get some inspiration. And the second question was about timers. How can I make persistent timers that you run, forget, and then they actually run something in the future? I'm not gonna make a demo about this one, but I'm gonna show it to you what it is and uh, I guess show you a pretty good example in, from the documentation. So uh, let me show you. So what is script? Well, script is very similar to automation, but the big difference is that the script is not triggered by anything. It won't run automatically. You have to call it. So uh, if you go to configuration, there is this automation and scenes. Here we have a tab with our automations. When I go to scripts and I create one, you could see that there is the, uh, the header for the script. So you can name it and you can put it icon entity ID. And then there is directly the sequence. So there is no trigger, there is no condition. The sequence itself, it's exactly the same as automations. In fact, when we were doing automations, we were looking uh, for the sequence of actions in the scripting language, in the script. So now you might ask me, uh, how is that useful? With a, with a script, you can create custom, well, scripts, really. Let me show you an example. Uh, I have here, if I go to developer tool, I go to services, and uh, let me take one script that I have created. So it's a script.notify. So this is a script I have created, and I'm gonna show it to you uh, in a second. And what it does is, it's kind of a wrapper for sending notifications to different channels. So here I can enter a message, and then I can select to send a message to different media players, for example, to my assistant here. Uh, I can uh, create a logbook entry, I can send message to mobile phones, or I can create a permanent notification. And it also features a checking for the do not disturb settings. And for this reason, I included this uh, switch that this is an emergency notification to ignore the do not disturb message. For example, if I have alarm triggered by the water leak sensors, I would uh, obviously ignore the do not disturb uh, message. I'll be much more disturbed by the uh, running water. So let me show you how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add here a subject of the message. So I will call it test. And then I'm going to have a notification that I'm going to send uh, to my uh, assistant, which is right next to me in here. I don't want to make it emergency. I don't want to create a logbook. Uh, I don't want to send it to my mobile phone and I don't want to make a permanent notification. So here I'm going to just enter the message and because I have all my notifications in check, I will write something in check and I'm going to say good morning in check. There you go. And if I'm going to just call the service in here. So it just said good morning in check. And uh, this is how it looks like in, in YAML. And I use this uh, whenever I want to send any notification uh, from my automations. So I don't know, when the drying cycle has finished, washing, there is a visitor ringing the uh, doorbell, mail in the mailbox, uh, I, I spoke about the water leak, and so on. So I would essentially have this block of text included in the automation. And the beauty of that is if I want to change anything in the way I send the notifications, I want to include new device or, or improve it, change it. I could do that centrally in the script and all the automations, they will stay. I wouldn't have to change them. And so let me show you how this uh, script looks like. So I'm going to go into, uh, let me see. I have, I have that included in the uh, packages and this one I have in the, uh, I guess notify and uh, and here it is. So there is a script, I call it notify 
and uh, so there is the alias and the description this is what I wrote and here I have all the fields that you saw when I was calling the script and so this is the name and the message and the list of entities with the media players and uh, each has description and there's also an example which is quite useful to understand what it actually means and it's also useful when I want to pre-fill the uh, example data and then there is the selector which is exactly the same as we were using in the blueprints so these are the different fields and then I have the sequence and the sequence is exactly the same as uh, we have used for the automation and in this case I'm using a, a set of choose actions which allow me to send different notifications based on the conditions so for example if I have uh, switched on the permanent boolean then it's going to call service uh, create persistent notification. If I chose to send a mobile notification then again it's gonna call service notify to our mobile phones or equally if I chose to create a logbook entry it's going to call service logbook log. So uh, that was scripts, nothing groundbreaking really. Now uh, for the timers, for the timers I'm not gonna create a example video because there is a pretty good one in the documentation so let me just show you. If I'm gonna go to home assistant timer and uh, click in here so the timer is a helper so you could create it through configuration automation and scene and helpers there is a, a batch that's gonna take you directly there now before we move on let me just point you to this important warning that uh, the current implementation of timers they do not persist over the restart so if you start a timer and then you restart home assistant after the restart the timer will not continue it will be idle and you would have to start it again so if this is something you need to do you would probably have to remember that the timer was running somewhere else probably in some boolean input switches and then you could uh, trigger automation by home assistant restart and you can check those but i guess this is uh, quite a specific scenario so i just wanted to remind you about that now back to the timers we could create it from configuration.yaml and the timer it has a name and it could have a default duration and an icon as well and uh, the timer you could start it so there is a service you can start the timer where you say the timer entity id and optionally you can add a duration for the timer to override the default one and then you can pause it and cancel it and so on and then there is a nice example so let's say you want to create an automation that uh, if you turn on a switch it'll start 30 seconds timer and after 30 seconds it will start another automation that will do something else so this is what the example is when you turn on a switch pump run then it will uh, start a timer called test which is a 30 seconds duration and then you have another automation that is triggered by the event that the timer has finished with the entity id of this timer so when this timer is finished so this is after 30 seconds it will send a notification and uh, earlier today we spoke about scripts so there is also a nice example about creating a wrapper around timers uh, using a script right so this was uh, scripts and automation uh, i hope it answered your question and you liked it and uh, i'll catch you on the next one peace and i mean that please thank you bye